NVIDIA's latest Blackwell GPUs sit inside server racks across the planet, quietly powering the AI revolution. From a gaming graphics pioneer to the beating heart of generative AI, NVIDIA's rise has been nothing short of explosive. These chips train massive models, run the heaviest AI workloads, and have pushed NVIDIA's valuation to historic highs, shipping nearly 6 million Blackwell GPUs in the past year. A single rack can connect 72 of them, merging into one colossal unified GPU designed for the most demanding AI systems ever built. GPUs remain the versatile workhorses for companies like NVIDIA and AMD, but a new category of AI hardware is rapidly emerging. Custom ASICs, application-specific integrated circuits engineered by hyperscalers like Google, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Broadcom. These chips are smaller, cheaper, optimized for one job, and expected to outpace GPU growth in the coming years. Alongside them are FPGAs, reprogrammable, field-programmable gate arrays, and a growing family of edge AI chips running intelligence directly on devices rather than in the cloud. The AI chip space is expanding fast, and it's getting crowded. To understand how all this happened, we need to rewind. In October, NVIDIA briefly became the world's first $5 trillion company, driven by a simple question. What makes a chip good for AI? A GPU, originally built for parallel processing to render images, turned out to be perfect for AI's math-heavy workloads. When a scene is rendered, thousands of pixels are calculated at once. Neural networks work the same way, massive amounts of data processed in parallel. The spark was lit in 2012 with AlexNet, often called AI's Big Bang. A research team used NVIDIA gaming GPUs, hacked for scientific use, to train a neural network that crushed the ImageNet competition. The world suddenly saw what GPUs could do for machine learning. AI workloads still need a host CPU, like NVIDIA's Grace processor in its Grace Blackwell systems. CPUs handle sequential tasks with a few powerful cores. GPUs, by contrast, contain thousands of smaller cores optimized for mathematical operations such as matrix multiplication, the backbone of deep learning. This parallelism makes GPUs ideal for both training and inference. Training feeds models enormous datasets, while inference uses those models to make decisions, everywhere from your Starbucks app to customer service agents to your wireless earbuds. NVIDIA sells GPUs directly to AI giants, including a massive, multi-year deal with OpenAI, and to governments from South Korea to Saudi Arabia to the UK. Cloud providers like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft lease NVIDIA GPUs by the second. And today, a single Blackwell rack costing around $3 million is in such demand that NVIDIA ships nearly a thousand of them every week. NVIDIA's strategy is clear. Don't just sell chips sell entire systems. Complete stacks provide better performance, speed, and power efficiency. But NVIDIA isn't alone. AMD has surged with its Instinct GPU lineup, winning major deals with OpenAI and Oracle. AMD's biggest differentiator? A far more open software ecosystem compared to NVIDIA's tightly controlled CUDA platform. NVIDIA says its Rubin GPU line will enter full production next year. But AI is evolving. Early large language models required huge training cycles, perfect work for GPUs. Now, as models mature, inference is becoming the dominant workload, and inference can run on cheaper, more specialized chips. This is where custom ASICs come in. A GPU is a Swiss army knife, and ASIC is a laser-focused, single-purpose tool, extremely fast and power efficient, but fixed in functionality. Designing one costs tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars, that's why only the biggest cloud providers can afford them, and why they build them. ASICs reduce power consumption, cut costs, and lessen dependency on NVIDIA, even as these same companies continue buying GPUs for flexibility and scale. Google pioneered the trend with its Tensor Processing Unit, TPU, in 2015. By 2017, Google researchers used TPUs to invent the transformer architecture, the foundation of modern AI. In 2024, we saw Google's Chip Lab, where its latest Ironwood TPU connects thousands of chips into a single AI supercomputer. Google just partnered with Anthropic to train Claude on up to a million TPUs. Some experts argue Google's TPUs now rival or outperform NVIDIA's GPUs, 
and there's growing speculation that Google may eventually open TPU access to the public. Amazon followed with its own lineup after acquiring Annapurna Labs in 2015. Inferentia arrived in 2018, Trainium in 2022. Unlike Google's conveyor belt style TPU design, Trainium uses clusters of flexible tensor engines, handling both training and inference efficiently. Amazon claims Trainium delivers 30 to 40% better price performance than competitors inside AWS. In Northern Indiana, Amazon built its largest AI data center, powering Anthropic's training using half a million Trainium 2 chips without a single NVIDIA GPU. Yet AWS still buys enormous quantities of NVIDIA hardware for its other data centers. Broadcom and Marvell play a different role. They help hyperscalers design ASICs, providing silicon expertise and networking IP. Broadcom designed chips for Google, Meta, and now OpenAI, which is working with Broadcom to build custom ASICs starting in 2026. Analysts believe Broadcom could control up to 80% of the custom AI silicon design market. Microsoft is building its Maya ASIC, though development has slowed. Intel has its Gaudi line. Tesla is developing its own AI chip. Qualcomm is entering data centers with its AI200. Startups like Cerebrus and Grok are pushing unconventional designs, giant wafer-scale chips, and lightning-fast language processors. Then there's Edge AI, chips inside phones, laptops, cars, cameras, and home devices. These include NPUs, neural processing units, small, efficient AI accelerators integrated into system-on-chips, Qualcomm, Intel, AMD, Apple's M-Series, Samsung, and NXP all build NPUs powering on-device AI. Running models locally reduces latency and protects user privacy. And as AI becomes ubiquitous, edge chips will eventually dwarf data center growth. FPGAs add flexibility to the mix. They can be reprogrammed after manufacturing, useful for networking, signal processing, or customized AI tasks. They're slower and less efficient than ASICs, but cheaper than custom designs. AMD leads the FPGA market after acquiring Xilinx, with Intel close behind through its Altera purchase. All these chips still rely on one company for manufacturing, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Most advanced AI chips in the world, from NVIDIA to Google to Amazon, are built in TSMC fabs. With geopolitical tensions rising, the US is investing heavily to bring chip making home. TSMC's new Arizona fab is now producing NVIDIA's Blackwell chips using its 4 nanometer process. Intel is also building advanced fabs in Arizona with government support. Chinese companies like Huawei, ByteDance, and Alibaba build their own ASICs, but face export controls that limit access to high-end chip making tools and top-tier GPUs like NVIDIA's Blackwell. The final challenge ahead isn't silicon, it's power. Massive AI data centers demand unprecedented energy, and the countries that solve power infrastructure will dominate the next era of AI. NVIDIA remains the leader, by technology, by ecosystem, and by scale. But as demand explodes, the race to build the next generation of AI chips is heating up. Dethroning NVIDIA won't be easy, but the market is expanding fast, and new contenders are rising every year. This is Jump to Future, and I will see you again soon.